Um, so basically, it's a portal. Uh, so from the moment the order is put in place uh, to purchase this to the time the customer gets uh, an email invitation to go in and actually put their uh, credentials, it's, it's literally minutes. Uh, and then they just log in. Um, here we have single sign-on. So I didn't ask me to log in, but you know, if you're logging from outside of the EMC network and you have not signed in before, it will uh, request you to, to log in. So I skipped that step here. Uh, but they're basically um, presented with a dashboard. Um, initially, when they don't have, um, they have not presented their accounts uh, to Cloud Snapshot Manager, this would be empty, obviously. But here, I've already added uh, um, the my account, my AWS account here, and it has gone in and discovered it. Uh, so one of the key features of this uh, solution is discovery of um, AWS resources. Uh, one of the key challenges that customers ha are facing today is that the lines of businesses have gone and started using their own, uh, you know, create their own IT, give their own credit cards in some cases, and then central IT is now all of a sudden uh, faced with uh, managing number of AWS accounts that, that different lines of businesses have uh, used. Uh, so this solution, again, in terms of scalability, it enables them to enter, uh, create a cloud account very easily, and they can just <coughs> basically go in and um, you know add a new um, cloud account and uh, so they just have to provide their access key id and, and secret key and from there uh, you know as soon as they save it uh, then we basically go off and, and uh, discover everything in their environment uh, then the next thing they have to do is basically set policies uh, here I've created two different policies, uh, one basically protecting um, it with daily snapshots, keeping it for 30 days, and then another one daily snapshots, keeping it for seven days. Uh, you know, we provided quite a sophisticated um, policy engine. Sorry, I, I don't want to block you here. <laughs> um, sophisticated policy engine that um, enables you to uh, set up <clears throat> uh, daily snapshots and you define uh, you know what is the retention period so here I have 30 days uh, or you could choose to have weekly snapshots and and decide what day of the week you want to do uh, the snapshots and, and then go on either monthly snapshots uh, so this enables customers to or, or users to have a granular um, policy starting with dailies and then maybe rolling up to weeklies and and then going monthlies for a number of years. <laughs> If I set a daily schedule and a weekly schedule for Mondays <coughs> and a monthly schedule for the first Monday, then on the first Monday it's going to take three snapshots, right? Uh, I I think we we are more. Uh, I don't believe that it's going to take three snapshots. I think it, it is sort of smart in, inside to uh, sort of know that you've sort you, of. You'll, you'll, you'll excuse me if I'm not happy with I with your belief. <laughs> Actually, just quickly, another question. So this is a SaaS offering. Um, can I go right now, sign up with my credit card, or do I need to engage uh, Dell Sales to get an account? Uh, you can have, you cannot, this is not, you cannot buy through credit card at this moment. Uh, we're working on that. Uh, you have to go to Dell EMC account to purchase it. Uh, but we are going to be offering free trial. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we announce it at reInvent, uh, we're going to actually, at that time, um, provide for capability for you to go in and log in <laughs> and, and try it out yourself. Okay. When does it take the snapshots? When? Yeah. Oh, okay. So then the next step, so that's a good segue to the next question, uh, to the next. Uh, so but then after you set up the policies, then you go in and create protection plans. And for protection plans, uh, you basically is the idea of associating resources with uh, policies. And there in the protection plan is where you actually say what uh, time you want this plan to execute. And it might be that, for example, for my accounting servers, I want it uh, to run off hours uh, from uh, for, for those servers. And, and so you can set the start time here and uh, you can, and the exact time you start executing that um, policy. 
And there are two ways uh, of selecting resources. It's either you can select resources individually, you can search the specific resource that you have based on tag names um, and then add it to this protection plan. Or uh, the other way that many of our customers really like to use it is based on tags. And uh, it enables customers to say, uh, any resource that comes up with a particular tag gets associated with this protection policy. So this way, if they uh, never want to come back to this interface and they have a new VM and the tag, um, let me give you the example that I have set up uh, for tags. Here, this is the, the next, this one I've set up based on tags. And what it is saying is that you basically, um, any, any VM um, that's in my cloud account in, in region US East 1, which has this tag name protection policy and tag value daily, is going to get associated to this policy. And, um, and any new server that comes up that has that tag automatically will get associated with that. So this way is really simple, uh, you know, um, and there's no manual step involved from that moment on. Uh, and then from there, uh, again, as soon as uh, this is set up, you save it, the uh, protection plan starts executing. And, um, and then for restore, so that's another key value. Okay. Uh, I had a couple of questions. Sure. <coughs> um, <clears throat> there, there have been a couple of well-documented instances of people learning other companies' AWS passwords and deleting all of their data and all of their backups. Um, so does Cloud Snapshot Management run in the same AWS account that the EC2 instances do? And does the S3 bucket it's writing to have to be in the same AWS account that the source data was from? Because if so, I'm still open to that source of data loss. And that's put at least one startup out of business. Yeah, uh, that's a good question. Um, so Cloud Snapshot Manager is a SaaS offering, so it is nothing running in customers' uh, VPC. Uh, so basically, this is running outside of the uh, Amazon uh, Cloud. An, an outside control plane. Exactly. Uh, so uh, you know, if they have separation of roles, so the person who's actually the administrator of VMs have separation access. Separation of roles is insufficient if somebody brute forces the administrator password on the AWS account, then I'm dead. It has to be two entirely different security contexts. Yes, yes. So th those are sort of in the initial release. Uh, so the the way that uh, customers again have asked is for us to also copy these to different accounts. So then they will have really limits over who accesses the um, you know the specific yeah. accounts. Uh, so you have another copy in some other account. So if a, a disgruntled employee goes in and deletes it, then basically they have it another copy in a different account. That capability is not in. I have to pay S three for two copies in that model yes yes okay your customers You're might security. not what's that pay for security yeah your customers may not object to that mine would no, no nobody else has a better answer today that though that i know of well you you can force this you know you the the data mover can have access to a security context that's completely different no but, i don't know i don't know any other product that does that though. well well, the thing is, for security, what the, the point is that what they can do is an administrator of an AWS could have, uh, they can limit the, the, the admin, the VM admin, uh, not have control over you snapshots. Roll, you, yeah, so you separation you, you of roles. So you have and, the database. And, and uh, therefore, if the yeah. VM account is hacked, you won't lose your data. But if <clears> the administrator <throat> account is hacked, you still lose all your data. Yeah, that's Cloud that's Spaces yeah. had their administrator AWS account hacked and was put out of business. That was code pages. Code page, yeah. Yeah, very aware of that one. Well, th those are some of the risks involved in having your environment in the cloud. That's, those are definitely risks. Uh, and isn't your job mitigating those yeah. risks? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, but Absolutely but the key question or the key requirement that comes up from customers is to have the ability to copy it across cloud. And again, I, I can't talk about NDA. I'm just saying that this uh, GA, we won't have that capability, but we listen very carefully to what our customers ask us to do. So <laughs> you could envision having that in the future at some point. Um, 
Okay, so with snapshots, we basically, uh, if you want to restore, and, and we have like literally one one click restore capability, you can say, show me all the snapshots from this point um, in time. And um, I can go here uh, and, and click on, on that, and then just basically say restore. And um, you can restore to uh, a, the same subnet or availability zone that the VM was running on or uh, a different one uh, within that region. Now, one of the key things uh, about this is that, um, again, it, we're uh, protecting the entire, at, uh, the entire machine at the VM level and not just the data that's uh, stored in the EBS volumes, but also the configuration of that VM. So if there is any virus attack and, and for some reason um, the uh, configuration gets clobbered, you know, firewall uh, security uh, settings and all that get clobbered, then they can go back to a point in time uh, before the attack and be able to recover. Um, so that's, that's our um, restore uh, capability. Then in terms of, um, uh, audits, uh, this is another key capability uh, requested by the customers who actually, uh, again, beta this uh, with us. Um, people want to know who did what, when, and um, this is exactly what we offer them. They can go back in time, produce uh, reports uh, of uh, what has happened, and uh, which is, again, essential uh, for you know many l larger companies who want to know exactly what happened. And so and it tells you what was uh, like. So for example, I changed here. Uh, my I, I created a new user uh, just this morning, and it tells me who that user was that got added um, to to my account. So you can basically have a control, uh, tight control over the environment. Um, and of course, you know, we I won't go into detail in, in many of these, but you know, we provide um, uh, events. Uh, user can see what went wrong. Uh, there was an error here on this uh, plan run failed. And uh, if I go back to jobs, you can you can see these are errors that I've generated myself. Uh, in other words, to just demonstrate uh, uh, this capability, you know, the, here is the failed one, and they can look on the failed and and see what VMs did not um, get uh, snapshotted, and they can even look at the details of what happened, why they did not. Um, and get snapshotted. Here, the instance, I'd actually uh, removed the instance, but it's still part of a, a protection plan, so that's why I was giving an error. Um, so, I think I pretty much covered, unless you want, you know, all the key features. Did I miss anything, uh, Domani? I think. Right, so, I, I, so I, I'm sorry, go ahead. So, we got a, a question from one of our other delegates on Twitter. What's the minimum snapshot granularity? You saw, you had daily. Oh, but good question. This, this it, it is goes my down. important yeah, it goes down. I want 15 minute snaps. Uh, we don't go down to the 15 minutes, and, and one of the key reasons is that AWS is uh, not going to be able to handle. So we went down as, as much as four hours. Uh, we've got requests from our customers to go down one hour, but you could overwhelm AWS. You know, if you go down to the 15 minutes granularity, you could definitely over, uh, overwhelm. So I have, a, I have a more, from an architectural question, you have the ability to do EC2 snaps. I saw RDS in there. Yes. Right? So that means, you know, obviously I could have database servers running in EC2. I could have my obviously RDS a database. A uh, question I have based on the last conversation, what about ECDM? Is there going to be ECDM integration to this? Oh, like, that's a very good question. So basically, um, EC, uh, we are working, um, all of this de was developed again from the ground up with the latest sort of technologies, uh, REST APIs. And uh, we've already had done a proof of concept of connecting ECDM with this. So if you're trying to enforce uh, protection policies that, it, uh, that span across on-prem over to cloud, you could actually do that from that, in, in, uh, from that same interface. So that's, that's, again, I don't want to talk about NDA stuff, but mm -hmm. uh, it, it's possible to connect. <laughs> but, it, but it does fit into right, to the, the earlier question, yeah. right? The strategy is to have a holistic view into your copies uh, whether they're in the public or private cloud yeah and then it extends to the other the other cloud providers that we're going to go to next so essentially i could view my whole estate right and, and see the copies good thing and we made the concept to be the same um so that that somebody using ecdm can easily uh, sort of expand this without having to come to this even pane of glass at all okay 